All right. Well, I've got 12.30 on my end. So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for today's pre-tournament ACC Women's Basketball uh, Media Zoom. Um, first, we're going to be joined by Louisville Head Coach Jeff Walls. So the format for today's call, we'll have each of the head coaches um, give us a brief opening statement or their overall thoughts on the uh, upcoming tournament this week. Um, and then we'll take questions from the media. Um, Louisville will be the number two seed in this week's tournament and open play at 6 p.m. on Friday. So, Coach, if you want to start us off with an opening statement, then we'll take questions from the media. You're on mute, Coach. No, I appreciate that. No, just uh, really excited about this uh, upcoming tournament. Uh, I think we should have some some really, really good games. This is probably the, the strongest that, I, that I've seen the ACC from top to bottom since we've been a part of it. And just looking forward to it. I mean, it's, it's always a fun time, some great, great basketball games. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tournament time now. So it, it, it's one and done. Perfect. And again, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function. Your first question is going to come from Jonas Pope. Jonas, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Coach, thanks for joining us. <clears throat> I want to ask kind of a, a big picture question. Obviously, Louisville has been a, a well-established program, but how good was exposure and I mean, expansion and coming into the ACC with, with Notre Dame and Syracuse a few years ago? How, how good was that for not only your program, but the league overall? Well, you know, of course it was great. I mean, it, it, it was great to, to come into the ACC. I was very fortunate uh, when I first got here to Louisville to be in the Big East back when you had Rutgers and West Virginia and Notre Dame and UConn and Louisville and Villanova. I mean, it was the best women's basketball league in the country, top to bottom. So I've been fortunate enough to, to be involved in great women's basketball leagues. And then when the expansion took place and we were able to move on over to the ACC and, you know, Syracuse comes and N Notre Dame comes, uh, you know, I, I think we've done our job in women's basketball with the expansion of bringing great basketball into the league. So I think it's only made the ACC stronger. And I think it shows itself today of what this, past season has been I mean just some great great basketball games it's a very well coached league with lots of outstanding players but your next question is going to come from Chris Hydell Chris go ahead with your question hey Chris Jeff how you doing I'm great thank you uh, talk about is your team uh, peaking at the right time because I know it's tournament time like you said or do you feel like you girls are ready to go and peaking and uh, ready for a stretch run well uh, you know we're we're excited with where we are we we are pretty healthy I mean we're we're not perfect there's still some you know some nicks and some scrapes here or there but overall I, I feel good with where we are but I've said it you know for the past two, two months and I'll, I'll say it again I mean it's just truly how I feel. Uh, you know, I, I think we are talented enough and good enough to get to a final four and make a run at things, but we're also at a point where we could get beat in the second round if we don't come out focused. Uh, you know, once you get to the second round of the NCAA tournament, it's, it's your final 32 teams and probably everybody within that 32 at one point or another has either been in the top 25 or received votes in the top 25. So everybody's good. And that's what makes it fun. The parity in women's basketball is getting stronger. And I think it's only going to continue to get better and better. So do I like where we are? Yes. Uh, but am I satisfied? Are we content? No. Thanks, Coach. Coach Thank you. Is going to come from Mitchell Northam. Hey, Coach. Um, just kind of wondering, you know, now that you kind of have the regular season to reflect back on, um, how did Emily kind of change your team and, and impact your program this season? Well, I think she's done a really, really nice job of, of, of fitting in with our team. And, and our team has done a really good job of accepting both Emily and Chelsea. Uh, it's, it's a team that only graduated one player uh, that went to the Elite Eight last year. So it, it's not like we were on the verge of collapse and needed someone to come in and save us. But at the same time, I've got players when 
we were looking to possibly get some transfers. I ask our players, hey, are you guys okay with this? Here's what we're looking to do. We're looking to add a point guard, which was Chelsea Hall. And then we're trying to get a versatile three, four, you know, they can help us with rebounding and some defense and scoring. And then Emily pops into the portal. And, and I, I talk to our players. I ask them, Hey, are, are you okay? If we go after <clears throat> Emily, are you okay with that? And the one I went to first was Mikasa Robinson because Mikasa was the one whose minutes were going to be directly impacted. And, you know, the maturity of Mikasa was as soon as I asked her, she goes, coach, I'm tired of Gardner. I'd love for her to be on our team. You know, and, and that's, that's not as easy as it might sound. You, you've got to be pretty darn mature. But these kids love to win, and they know that she was going to be able to come in here and hopefully help us do that. And she's really done a great job of, of coming in and blending in and just really developing friendships within the team. And we have had a seamless transition with our transfers th this year. And that's something that, that, that doesn't always happen, but we were very fortunate it did. John Lewis, you can go ahead with your question next. Jeff, I know you kind of touched on like about peaking at the right time and not, you know, not everything's perfect, but could you ask for a better result in a season finale going into a postseason tournament? And what does that mean? Is there such thing as momentum carrying from from a Sunday to a Friday tournament? Well, very, very, very pleased, obviously, with the way we played in that first half, with how we defended, not only shot the basketball, but I thought we were excellent on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, so, yes, I, I am pleased with that. But at the same time, got to make sure our, our, our kids understand no, nobody's going to care what took place on Sunday when we come out to play on Friday. You know, you aren't up 15 to nothing just because you played well in your last regular season game. You've got to carry it over. So for us right now, it's making sure we are level-headed. We understand that there's a lot of work to be done. And it's not going to be easy. As I've said, we have the utmost respect for everybody in this league. We know, I know Notre Dame is a good basketball team. They're a really good team. We have played really, really well the two times we've, we've, pl we've, played, we've played them. And, you know, I told our kids before the game started yesterday, you know, I'm not expecting the same result as when we played at our, at our place. So we have to come out ready to play, focused, follow a scout, and we did a great job of that. Uh, so we, we're, we're pleased with where we are, but at the same time, we're not going to rest on those laurels. Your next question is going to come from Jonas Pope. Jonas, go ahead with your question. Yeah, a couple a couple coaches in the league replace a couple of Hall of Famers. You got a uh, Courtney who replaced Sylvia at UNC, and and Ivy replaced Muffet at, at Notre Dame. Can you speak to the job that those who have done in a short time and and replace those Hall of Famers and what they've done with their programs? Well, they they they've done a great job. I mean, you know, they're uh, two programs that have a national name. Uh, so you, you, you've already got, got that bit behind you, uh, the success, obviously that both of them have had Sylvia and, and Muffet speaks for themselves. So they, they have done a really nice job of coming in and continuing to keep things going. I, I don't count last year really for a whole bunch because of COVID, you know, we were fortunate here at Louisville that we really weren't impacted by it. I think we missed one game. The entire entire season so for us it didn't have a big impact but for others it did impact teams that you might not have gotten it but the team you're supposed to play so now you're off for two weeks you could never get into a flow of anything so you know I, I think they've both done a really really good job this year you've got both of them that you know are sitting there at a, a four and five seed in our conference tour tournament they've had really good years so uh you know it's speaks volumes for uh, for what they've done and then you know I'll, I'll i'll speak for my staff i mean i think it's pretty re, uh, re remarkable what we've been able to do here as well uh you know for five years now we've either been first or second in this league we we're four-time acc reg, re, regular season champs and then we finished second by a game this year so 
I'm, 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 I'm really pleased with, with what my staff has done, our players have done to be able to, to continue to keep us at the top of the league because it's a very competitive league. And Coach, your last question is going to come from Aaron Beard. Aaron, go ahead with your question. Hey, Jeff, uh, when I saw you in Chapel Hill, you, part of your, after the UNC loss, part of your response there was, aside from the fact that we could lose in the second round or go to the final four, was also how you'd respond. And you were talking a little bit about, you know, whether you guys were peaking or not, or that was the question. What do you like about the response specifically to that moment in the game since and the way you're playing now in terms of from a loss and learning from it? Well, our attention to detail has been much better. We, we really did not do a very good job in that North Carolina game of following a scout. Um, for as poorly as we played, it's, you know, it's a one-point game. It, it's either it goes back and forth, uh, you know, twice within the last minute of the game. And when you actually step back and look at the film, it's pretty amazing that we were even at that point because of how bad we played. Uh, Carolina obviously played well, give them a credit, but it's nice to be able to look back on a game film and go, guys, we did not follow a scout. We did not do what we had talked about. And as we've said from day one, we're, we're not the type of team that can just roll the basketballs out, go play five on five and expect to beat, beat people. We are very detail oriented. And I think that showed in yesterday's game, if we're going to lose we normally are going to lose by making people do things they don't like to do. If you're a three point shooter, we're going to make you shoot pull up jumpers. If you're a post that likes to go over your left shoulder, we're going to make you go over your right shoulder. And if you finish those, then we tip our hat to you and say, great job. Uh, but in that Carolina game, we let kids do exactly what they do well and they did it. And that's something that we normally do not do. So we were able to sit back and, and look at film and really evaluate that and I think we've really taken a step forward from those games perfect coach that's all the time we have for you today thanks so much and we'll look forward to seeing you in Greensboro this week I appreciate it thank you all thank you